Thank you, George. And uh, thank, I thank the organizing for this kind invitation and to provide me with this wonderful topic because you asked me the precise question. We've heard a lot about many technologies, many applications in the era of internet, but you asked me, please, provide us outcomes. And we may talk about uh, patient-oriented outcomes or even health system-oriented outcomes. And uh, these are my conflicts. And uh, when Samir and I published this paper, I was really intrigued about the title, A Tale of Two Cities. And uh, after a while, I noticed uh, growing evidence on the literature claiming that uh, factors exogenous to a country's income are responsible for 84% of the increase in life expectancy. It's a very important outcome. The diffusion of technological advances affects the efficiency of health systems in many countries. And more than that, the superconvergence applied to a health system may improve health outcomes before distribution of wealth reaches a poor community. And maybe the most important message is that health outcomes improvement further promotes economic growth, creating a virtual cycle. We used to go to governors to ask a budget for health. And they used to claim that uh, we are just expanding money without no outcomes. But now we'll do the opposite. We'll teach them that by approaching health outcomes, we may promote economic growth. With that in mind, I can uh, suggest that you, we divide two eras, a pre and a post digital era. You can get any digital file and transmit it through high-speed network from Asia to South America and providing a dramatic change in medical practice, providing integrity, accessibility, and confidentiality. At the end of the day, what we are doing with telemedicine, we are definitely replacing the space for time dimension. There is no space dimension anymore. You can treat a patient wherever it might be. You can help patients in very poor area. Then this is the, a very fortunate paper from a French guy that the time dimension replaces the space dimension. And uh, this technology, maybe telemedicine is the most important disruptive innovation we are aware of. Because of this digital care, we are moving to a low cost, high tech, and high access. We are discussing high cost, high tech, and low access technology in this meeting. And telemedicine works by means of three magic words, scalability, capillarity, and technology. I'll give you a piece of information of how can we dramatically change outcomes. We've heard from this information exposure that physicians, 75% of them, admit not to understand statistics. So how could they implement guidelines? For this very reason, it's very important to notice that we have a huge gap in the uptake of new guidelines. It takes an average of 17 years to get a guideline uptaken. 17 years. And we are completely aware that adherence to these guidelines improve outcomes, improve mortality. We may say that we have a lot of good physicians, good cardiologists, that can help implement these guidelines. But worse than that, there is a physician shortage, especially specialist shortage. How can we manage that by means of telemedicine? Dr. Narula from this hospital published the 
intensive care unit, electronic intensive care unit, and by means of implementing American College guidelines, he dramatically improved mortality, reduced from 16 to 5 percent. Only implementation of guidelines. Dr. Mehta provided me with this uh, slide that we no longer treat stable patients in the cat lab. We are treating ACS and mostly STEMI patients. And we've done a lot for hospital mortality. Yes, but we did absolutely nothing for pre-hospital. And now 75% of mortality will happen before the hospital environment. Dr. Eric Bates and Dr. Jacobs show that the challenge is a logistic one, based on time. With that in mind, we implemented the Latin America telemedicine program in almost 200 centers in Latin America. It started in Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Chile next year. And uh, this is a clinical decision support system. Computers will help us with cognitive uh, computing how to treat patients and to change the procedures. A year ago, I came here one year ago exactly and showed you almost 2,000 STEMIs. And now, 12 months later, we double, 4,000. We got almost uh, 400,000 patients and we implemented diagnosis in five minutes, mortality 8% and 46% primary PCI. In my last message, from my town in the center of Brazil, you've never heard about my town. You've heard about Uber. It's Uberlandia. You'll never forget about that. We expanded throughout all Latin America, and we started to collect data from many projects. Tele-AF, tele-stroke, tele-dermatology, whatever, 11,000 patients a day. Think about that. 11,000 patients a day, a huge amount of data, and we implemented it for clinical research. This is my last message about how can we improve outcomes by means of telemedicine. Doing cloud computing clinical trials, you upload information from anywhere and you get data collection, data processing, data monitoring, learning machine, and this system will help you dramatically implement all the information you need because you know the precision of a trial depends on the sample size. And you get huge sample size, but you don't miss data. You keep uh, monitoring patients by means of telemedicine and technology. Doing that in the center of Brazil, in a very small town, in poor area, we were involved in many clinical trials and the FDA suspected of fraud because we were top enroller in many trials, like the optimized trial. And then, to bring you a message and to conclude, how can we implement outcomes with telemedicine? I would say that this is the virtual cycle. If you implement telemedicine, you can improve efficiency, you get outcomes, and amazingly, for the first time, we noticed that you can increase your country income and expand your life expectancy by using all of this technology implementation. And to conclude, I would say that the time dimension replaces the space dimension. There is no way, the way to singularity, disruptive technology, says that we now need a manager of the future. We don't have a manager of the future in the hospitals, in the cat lab. Speed is the new value. Internet of things, big data, artificial intelligence, the world is not changing. It's, it has already changed. And telemedicine applications, I think that there is no telemedicine anymore. It's e-health. And my friend Narula gave me this book from the quantum guys they say that everything that can happen does happen. Thank you so much.